Now for our story. Sergeant Bill Meade was in a restless mood tonight. The thought of spending a lonely evening in Bungalow B of the Wakefield Auto Court had been unbearable. He knew that in all likelihood he'd be released from the Army before too long and was faced with an adjustment to civilian life, the economic adjustment. But in addition, because of his personal situation, the complications involved in his marriage to Kit, there were many other problems to be solved. During the lonely period of Kit's absence in California, Bill had been thinking about what he was to do, how he could best solve the perplexing situation with which he was faced. And yet there was so little he could do toward settling things until Kit returned. Tonight, his feeling of helpless frustration was very strong. He walked into Wakefield and sat down in the lobby of the Bowman Palace Hotel. He was leaping listlessly through the evening paper when he heard David Bowman's friendly voice. Hello there, Bill. Oh, Mr. Bowman. Well, this is a piece of luck running into you tonight. Well, I was going to say the same thing. I've been nursing a fine case of the jitters. <laughs> well, I, I haven't got the jitters exactly, but you know, I needed someone to talk to. Didn't want to be alone. Well, you've come to the right person, Mr. Bowman. That's exactly the way I feel. Yeah, fine, fine. We'll have to give each other a little pep talk. <laughs> you mean life is real, life is earnest? <laughs> well, something like that, I guess. <laughs> My housekeeper went to see her sister tonight, so I'm dining out. Bill, why don't you join me? Perhaps we can get to the philosophical stage over our coffees. Well, I've had dinner, but I'd like to come along for the ride. Fine. Coffee. <laughs> I haven't tasted any for weeks. I make a black liquid I call coffee. <laughs> Reminds me of that stuff you put on automobile radiators to keep them from leaking. <laughs> <laughs> well, come in with me and have a good cup of jam with them. Hmm? It's the best thing they make. It's nice and quiet here this time of the evening. I enjoy coming in when I've been working late at the bank. Yeah, it's just about the best place in town up there. Mm -hmm. uh, have some more coffee, Bill? No, no, thanks. Two cups is my limit. Well, I feel a lot better already. Mm, nothing like a good meal to give you a lift. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps the old Greek philosophers weren't so far off when they said the seat of the soul was in the solar plexus. <laughs> yes, I think the old gentlemen knew what they were talking about. Hmm. Uh, by the way, Bill, what do you hear from Kit? Well, according to her last letter, she's all right. She didn't say much. Mm -hmm. well, I suppose you can take it for granted that... No news is good news. Maybe. But the way things are, I don't really understand why I haven't heard more from her. I expected that... What did you expect, Bill? Well, I just mean that Kit ought to be coming back pretty soon. Well, I imagine you're looking forward to Kit's returning, anxious to get things settled about your divorce. Yes, I am. You'll have quite a few things to iron out between the two, you know, I should think. You're right. As I think I told you before, Mr. Bowman, the trouble is that before Kid left, we had no definite understanding. I'm afraid it may be a little difficult. Well, there's no question about that. It will be, I'm sure. Kid has a mind of her own. She's not an easy person to convince. Mm. Runs in the family, I'm afraid. Don't forget Ben. He's not going to accept anything lying down, you know. He's always wanted your marriage to Kid to stick. And he'll move heaven and earth to see that it does. At least... On the surface. No, I know he's opposed to the idea of a divorce. And yet I can't seem to get it through my head. It's so odd. Now, you'd think, looking at it from his standpoint, that he'd be glad. He certainly isn't enthusiastic about me as a son-in-law. Well, that may be, but the point is, you represent something to Ben. That is, your marriage to Kit represents something to him. For one thing, it was a proof that he could get what he went after that he could get Kit anything she wanted. Makes me feel sort of foolish, but I guess that's the size of it, all right. And having gotten Kit what she wanted, Ben doesn't intend to give up without putting up a good fight. You might as well get used to that idea, Bill. I know. You're absolutely right, Mr. Bowman. Ben, well, Ben's the sort of a man who feels he has to prove his strength by being able to control things, people. Mm, I found that out pretty early in the game. And you know, Bill... Ben can be a very dangerous man if you get in his way. Sure. I know that, too. But to tell you the truth, Mr. Bowman, Ben Calvert doesn't scare me at all. Well, I'm glad to know that, Bill. 
Because it's very possible you may have a pretty rough period ahead of you. I like you. And I'd want you to be prepared. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm prepared for the worst. Yeah, but the funny thing is... I honestly believe that I'm more concerned for kids' happiness than our own father is. I don't doubt that you are. You see, Mr. Bowman, it seems to me that Mr. Calvert's attitude towards Kit has always been more possessive than paternal. I mean, she's just been something of his that he was proud of. The way you're proud of a handsome house or a piece of furniture, almost. <laughs> and also, a sort of investment. He wanted her to improve her value as much as possible, and if, through her, he got something he wanted in personal satisfaction and vindictiveness, well, that was part of it, too. I think you've got it pretty well figured out, Bill. <laughs> oh, I know I couldn't make Kit happy if we went on together. But that doesn't bother Mr. Calvert. Not for a minute. No, it doesn't. Ben doesn't give a hoot about anyone but himself. What he wants. <laughs> He's bound and determined that I'm to live in his house when Kit returns. I've told him I absolutely wouldn't think of it. But he refuses to listen. Well, Ben has this vision of himself as the head of the family, guiding the destinies of everybody. Sure, that's it, all right. Well, all I can say is this is one destiny he's not going to guide. Regardless of any plans Mr. Calvert may have, I'm going to do this thing the way it seems best to me. And in the long run, I'm sure it'll be best for Kit, too. I couldn't give her the sort of life she ought to have, not feeling the way I do, with my feelings so bound up with with other people. You know, Bill, it's my feeling, if you'll forgive my being so frank. Go ahead, Mr. Bowman. I sure one of the few people in this town I feel I can be open with the way things are. Well, I was going to say, I feel that, that you're still in love with Peggy Douglas. Yeah. Yes, I am. There's no use kidding myself about it. I just Then don't... tell me, Bill. Is it because of Peggy that you're so definite about getting a divorce? Or no, it isn't, Mr. Bowman. No, I can truthfully say that's not the reason. It... It's just something I have to do anyway. Aunt Mary pointed that out to me once, quite a while ago. I see. Well, in a way, it's good you look at it that way. So many things can happen. What do you mean, Mr. Bowman? I don't think I get you. Well, you know, people change sometimes, Bill. They don't just go on feeling the same way about things. Especially a young girl like... Mr. Bowman. Peg I have a feeling you're not talking just generally. Are you thinking about Peggy's friendship with this writer, Nicholas Dorn? Well, Bill, I, I do know they see quite a lot of each other. Yeah, so do I. I've seen them around quite a lot. But somehow I can't believe. Uh, of course, you must know you're so close to the family out there. Such a good friend of Lefty Larkin's, too. Mm -hmm. Lefty and I have always been very close friends. But Won't you doesn't... tell me, Mr. Bowman? I, I, I've got to know. Do you think there's anything in it? I mean, do you think that Peggy's serious about Nicholas Dorn? Well, Bill... I haven't talked to Peggy herself. Now, I can't be sure. And anyway, it isn't for me to say. I just meant it might be better for you not to let your plans be affected too much by any thoughts of what happened in the past. As I said, people do change. It's better not to count on anything. Because of David Bowman's obvious reluctance to make a definite statement... His inability to make an honest denial, Bill realized that some sort of an agreement must exist between Nicholas Dorn and Peggy Douglas. That their friendship was more than a casual one of chance acquaintances. In view of what he'd gathered from his conversation with Peggy's best friend, Jane Plummer, Bill was alarmed and depressed, too, by this knowledge. He'd tried to be honorable. He'd kept his word to Kit. Now, at looked as if this delay might have lost him the girl he loved so much. 